Hey, what's up dorks? Welcome back to my channel. Now, with this Ebola outbreak going on, I'm stuck inside with nothing better to do than play Animal Crossing while getting paid. But I'm not mad, cause it's a dream come true pretty much. However, since I am stuck inside, that also means I get to finally return to making content for YouTube again. And hopefully I can squeeze one or two more videos before I have to return back to work. Now, I've been talking around friends and family, and they've been asking me, how to play Animal Crossing or, or what even is an Animal Crossing? Well my friends, follow me and I will show you a few tips and tricks that can help you play or understand Animal Crossing. Now, before I start giving out tips on how to play Animal Crossing New Horizons, I want to give a simple little recap of all the games that were released before it and show you guys what the game is all about. Mainline Animal Crossing games had always baffled me on how to explain it to the average Joe. A Joe who has never heard of an Animal Crossing. Some people like to call it a life simulation and leave it at that, but it's much more complex than that, or rather, much more simpler than that. Animal Crossing to me is more of a laid back version of The Sims, where you control your character, maintain an island, a town, or someone else's town, and explore while collecting bugs, fishes, fruit, plants, art, clothing, and villagers. You can sell said items you collect, minus your villagers, and you can befriend them while paying back your debt to Daddy Tom Nook. Now that the introduction is out of the way, let me get to the history. In the beginning, Animal Crossing was released in Japan in 2001 and was later brought to the US in 2002 for the GameCube. In the original game, you arrive in a town and move in, but shortly after you have to pay your debts to Tom Nook for hooking you up with a place to live and furniture. For the next game, Animal Crossing Wild World, it released in 2005 for the Nintendo DS, and it has you doing the same thing in the previous one, but with more customability and online play. You still had to do the run of the mill stuff like pay off your debts or a mob will break your legs, but hey, it was pretty fun and cute. Next up is Animal Crossing City Folks that was released on the Wii in 2008, and by god it's the same thing but with motion controls. It's the end of the world! Nah, I kid. It was very revolutionary because it added a city with lots of shops where you can buy clothing and shoes. Up next we have my favorite entry, Animal Crossing New Leaf, which released in 2013 for North America on 3DS and oh man, this is Animal Crossing, brought so much to the table. More customability, added packs to make, more bugs to catch, more fish to fry, more villagers to befriend, and it was beautiful. Then the Mad Men added amiibo support to finally get my dream village. In this game you're the mayor, and trust me, I let the power get to my head. With being the mayor, you can do things to your town that you were able, never able to do in the previous games, like choose public work projects, make bridges at will, make shops, everything. But for the past 5 years, nothing came from Nintendo. No word on a new Animal Crossing game. Besides Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, that is more of a spin-off than a mainline game, and with no news, the fans were getting impatient. The Nintendo Switch was selling way better than the Wii U, and the Animal Crossing community thought that making a new Animal Crossing game for a popular and new hardware would make a great recipe for success. However, Nintendo didn't realize this. For months, the community banded together to cast satanic rituals and sacrifice newborn babies and virgins to at least get a Nintendo Direct about the game. Funny how the Animal Crossing games are so wholesome and cute, while the fans do things like kill for a trailer and sacrifice for the game. Anyways, then finally after all the bloodshed, the trailer revealed. The community rejoiced! All this blood that was spilled was worth it. We finally got our new game releasing in early 2019, which is only a few months away from the trailer that released in 2018. However, things went downhill from there. Weeks went by, then months, and no word from Nintendo about the game at all. I remember googling Animal Crossing every single day since November 2018, to see if maybe they released new information or new ideas. But unfortunately, our whimpers went unnoticed. By some time in 2019, the game were delay, and a new release date was March 2020, and they finally released a name and an actual trailer in June 2019. Literally months of no info at all of the game, but at least we got a release date. But now looking back at March 2020, I think it was worth it. The developers took their time to polish this game and I truly think it's a masterpiece and every day and every month spent waiting was worth it. And that brings us to today, Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch. 
This game is such a breath of fresh air to the series, but it keeps the same tone and mechanics of the old games. Instead of a town to be in charge of, it's an island, and instead of buying everything outright with bells, you can now craft. It's my favorite! Animal Crossing and Minecraft together, that's a match made in heaven! Now, some of you may be wondering, hey, this is a kid's game, it's all artsy and cutesy, why, why would you, or more importantly I, want to play this game? Well, I'll tell you, nincompoop. It's a nice, wholesome, and time-consuming game where it lets your mind stay at ease while you make new friends with your fellow villagers and collect fish, bugs, and flowers. If you're looking for a fast-paced type of game, this isn't for you, but I implore you to at least give it a try because it might surprise you, and especially some of those tricks I'm about to show you, you may actually enjoy it even more. Although before you continue, please note, these are not high tier MLG Pro Quickscope tips and tricks. They are more of a entry level or beginner type of tricks. So for those who are new to the series or people returning from a long hiatus, you may stay if you like, but be mindful these may be already out there. Uh, this is just my take and my trip tips, so stick back and uh, enjoy. Let's get started. Now, if you've been playing the game for a while now, you may have noticed that the time in the game may be corresponding to your current real life time. Well, that's because it is. Throughout the whole series of Animal Crossing, its selling point has always been operating in real time. So what does that mean? Well, that means that things that take time to build like houses, home upgrades, museums, shops, and villager homes all take one real life day to complete. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's stupid. Might as well play real life at that case. And you're not wrong. However, in all of the 19 years the series has been around, that's always been how it is. And while that isn't necessarily a good thing, it can help you learn about the importance of planning ahead, and the time changing mechanic in the game is a nice touch. Now, my first tip with this time mechanic is that regardless of whatever time you start a project or plant a tree or whatever type of plant, the next day starts at 5am. Are you not catching my drift? Well that's okay. So let's say you plant a new villager house down and Daddy Tom Nook says it should be completed around the next morning. If you planted the house down at 4.30 a.m. in the morning, it will be completed by 5 a.m. or 30 minutes after you planted it. So my tip there is to try to do everything before 5 a.m. That includes house upgrades, other villagers' homes, museums, or shops, and even plants. Planning before 5 a.m. makes them grow the next day. So take advantage before the new day at 5 a.m. For the second tip, I recommend you pay off your loans as fast as possible to Tom Nook. Once you receive your own little cute tent and settle down, you can talk to Tom Nook and he'll tell you to owe him money for being on the island. You're going to want to pay that off as soon as possible. Reason being because once you pay him off, you may actually upgrade to a house. Once you start upgrading your house, you can start progressing through further into the game like finding new villagers or gaining new shops. But you're probably wondering, how do I pay off this huge loan? Well, that leads to my next tip. My approach at acquiring tons of bells, the currency for Animal Crossing, is to go around the island looking for fish, bugs, and fruits. The rarer the fish or bug, the more bells you can acquire. Once you have your inventory full of fish and bugs, you may sell it at Timmy and Tommy's tent, or at Nook Cranny's, their shop, and they will gladly buy your goods. There as well, you can buy more tools to continue on your quest to pay off your massive debt, or you can buy furniture goods. Along the way, you can talk to villagers and make new friends and hang out. Just like real life, sadly. My fourth tip would be to acquire as many non-native fruits to your island as possible and plant them so that once you grow from a fruit to a tree, they may release more fruit and you can sell them for a great profit. However, you're probably wondering, what are native fruits and how do I acquire non-native ones? Well, that's simple. To see what type of fruit is your native one, you can check via your nuke phone and in Passport, it tells you what fruit is yours. Now, to get non-native fruit, you actually have to have friends with Animal Crossing and join their islands and hopefully they have fruit that are non-native to your island and you can plant them back at your place. Although this may sound tedious and long, it actually pays out in the long run because native fruit to your island only sells for about 250 bells a pop, but once you sell non-native fruit, it actually goes up to 500 bells, and if you plant many trees, it is definitely a daily money maker. Tip number 5. Talk to your villagers more. Every day, you may notice that your villagers are animals, and they can actually talk back to you. Well, take advantage. 
talk to them more. These cute creatures are random and are on your island, so make yourself at home and enjoy the company. If you talk to your villagers, they may actually help you out with public projects and they may give you DIYs or play little games like hide and seek with you. To date, there are 402 villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which means any of the 402 villagers can spawn in your island, and each one has a different personality and look to them. While you only start off with two of them, over time you can get a total of 10 villagers on your island. So choose wisely about who you invite to your island. How do I invite to my island? Well, simple. What Nook Miles you acquired throughout your game, you can redeem a Nook Mile ticket to travel to randomly generated island that is not owned by anyone and can be mined for resources and acquire rare things like fruit you don't have or fishes and blugs to flowers. On the deserted island, however, you will find a random villager there. And once you talk to them three or four times, they will ask the question if they sh should move to your island. If you really like them or like how they look or act, then I highly recommend but keep in mind, you can only have 10 at a time. But what happens if I reach my 10? Do they just live there forever? Well, unfortunately after some time, some villagers will move out and others will take their place. Some leave for effective reasons like neglect for a long time, not showing them enough love, or just because they felt like it. Sometimes it hurts, but that's why I always say spend as much time with them, talk to them. Hey Wally World! I heard you say something about Nook Miles. What are those? Well, my fine friend, that is my next tip. My tip is to acquire as many Nook Miles as possible. Now, I'm not saying to hoard them until you have 50,000 Nook Miles. However, I have a decent amount, like 8,000, to buy items from the Nook Mileage kiosk and to fly to a deserted island. So in order to get a lot in a good amount of time, is to upgrade to a house from a tent and you acquire Nook Miles Plus, where tasks appear at the top of the Nook Mileage app, and they are so easy to complete like planting flowers, fishing, bug catching, selling, all those things. All things you're already doing, but you get paid in Nook Miles for. Over long gameplay time, you will see Nook Miles add up, and before you know it, you will have 20,000 like me. A lot of people don't notice, but at the start of a new day at 5am, things appear on your island and stuff starts to happen. For starters, four fossils appear on your island every day. You can acquire these fossils with a shovel and can either donate them to your museum to show them off to your friends or sell them once you appraise them at the museum. I recommend taking them to the museum so that you can finish it off faster. However, if Bladders, the museum host, says that you already donated some, then by all means sell the fossils. But please do not sell them just because you need money, because you may regret that in the future. Other things that grow daily are fruits. Native fruits take about three days to regrow. However, non-native fruits take about four to six. So my advice there is to gather all your fruit, sell it off as soon as possible. That way you can have new fruit growing as soon as possible. Another thing you should look out for at the start of a new day is resources like wood and rocks. They all reset, so that means you can go ahead and chop down some wood and chip away at rocks so that you may acquire some rocks or iron or even more. Another tip is to find a money rock. Now, what is a money rock? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Every day, a random rock will become a money rock, where once it is hit, it is released bells, and it can be hit up to eight times to get a bunch of bells. It is a money maker. However, you must hit it back to back eight times in a quick session to do this. I recommend digging two holes behind you to make it easier to make the max amount of money. Lastly, I recommend checking out the Nuke Miles kiosk at the community tent to get daily bonuses for logging in. By the end of the 7 day you may receive 300 nook miles and then if you continue you get 300 every single day from there. My next tip, it's a short one but pretty funny. When you're looking for resources like sticks, wood and bringing down fruits, bring a net please. Because when you are shaking trees there is a good chance that you may bring down a wasp hive and they will try to sting you. If stung by wasp they will give you a funny looking eye and if stung twice in a row you will pass out and spawn at your house with no penalty. However, if caught with the butterfly net and sold to Timmy and Tommy, you may receive $2,500 for each wasp and the nest appears 3-4 to four times a new day on your island, so be ready to be uh, making money with the opportunity. Did you know that trees and other plants like saplings, flower plants, and other trees can be picked up and placed down elsewhere? Well, now you do! In order to complete this difficult feat, you must first eat a fruit, any fruit will do, and once you eat one, you can pick up any full-grown tree. Be careful though, because if you have eaten a fruit and hit a rock, 
it will completely break the rock and it won't respond till the next day and one rock responds per day per island. Saplings do not require fruit nor flowers. All you need to do is pick it up and hold the shovel and dig it up. You can also place down pats to make your town look more organized and pretty. Granted, the game's official pat maker doesn't show up till later in the game. You can actually place down custom designs and a few of them combined make nice patterns for pats. And coupled with flowers and trees, you can make the cutest looking town with patterns and all the good stuff to make your friends jealous of your island. Lastly, I wanted to go over tarantulas and other bugs that work the same way like them. Being in the northern hemisphere, you've probably seen one too many tarantulas in the middle of the night and you accidentally get too close and it stings you, prompting you to pass out and spawn at your house. Well, there is a way to actually catch them. To do that, you must spot one between the hours of 7pm to 4am from January to April and between November and December. If you meet these conditions, go outside and look for one. But be careful because if it spots you running, it will chase you and the only way to avoid this thing is to catch it with a butterfly net or run away and enter a building. If you want to catch it, you must have fast reflexes, however this is not the ideal way to catch it. If you want to catch it, you must first find one and then sneak up to it. However, when I mean sneak up, I mean you gotta hold down the A button on your switch and move towards it using your left stick. Once you start getting closer, it may notice you and it may bring up its legs. Don't let that scare you though. Wait until it brings up its legs back down and start moving towards it again. The bug will bring up its legs again and you will repeat the process until the bug is within catching distance. Then cast your net. Once you caught the tarantula, it could be sold for a whopping 8,000 bells. This technique can also work with other bugs that are stationary and that run away when you walk towards them. So this can come in handy. Well folks, that was long and tedious, but I sure do hope that I helped a few folks out there in the game. I didn't want to do a review of the game and go more into details into the other games because I may do something like that in the future, but I just wanted this to be an introduction to the new game for many newcomers jumping on the bandwagon. Anyways, take care guys, and I'll see you boys next time.